All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hey, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad. And good morning to you, and thank you so much for tuning in. In the backyard, Pastor Perry, man. Listen, we had to go off uh, and then come back on the spot that we were in. The sun was just too, too bright, and I couldn't see anything on the screen, so we had to come back uh, this morning. So good morning to every one of you this morning. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. I need y'all to share, like, tag, invite, start a watch party today. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard, Pastor Perryman, all right? Hey, shout out to Miss C.P. Little. Shout out to my wife, Pastor Sophia. Lyndon Johnson is on. I mean, Lyndon Yates is on today. Minister Kim Simmons is on. Shout out to Miss Diane King. You know, girl, you all of that and 10 bags of chips. So shout out to you. Shout out to Miss Karen Yates who's on. Miss Abigail Yates is on. Miss Jennifer Smith, I got to give you my pound. Miss Bam is on today. Shout out to you. Shout out to Miss D who's on today. Hey, shout out to my beautiful and lovely daughter. Ashley Perryman is rocking with us today. Good to see you. Miss Victoria Williams is in the house. Kim Simmons is in the house. Miss Marie Williams is in the house. Man, y'all coming on in this morning. That's what I'm talking about. Shout out to Miss Jeanette Bell Neely, who's in the house of Fort County High School class of 86. You go, girl. Good to see you this morning, too. So listen, I need you to share, like, tag, invite, start a watch party, declare and decree with me that the scammers will not be a part of our broadcast this morning, all right? Let me get some of this amazing coffee out of my Belizean cup today. It's going to be lit. It's going to be fire today. So y'all share, like, tag, invite. Need you to start a watch party. Get other people to come on and be a part this morning of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman, all right? All right. Let's get to it today. When I was a kid years ago, um, my grandmother used to go to Greenwood, Mississippi to shop all the time. That's where all the major stores were for us in the Delta where we lived. And so i never forget one Saturday, we're going to Greenwood, Mississippi, and we go over into this, this shopping area over there where the shopping area has a sporting goods store in it. Uh, now, my people back in the IBM would understand where the store is. Right now in that section now is the Metro PCS is over in that section over there. And it used to be a sporting goods store over there. The, 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 the movie theater is in that section. So it used to be uh, um, a sporting goods store. And I'll never forget, walked inside of the sporting goods store. And I'm just looking around. I'm like a kid. I'm looking around. And I come across a funny looking thing called weights. I've never seen these weights before. I've seen the ones that were circular. And you put the sand in the water. And I've seen them. But i never seen the ones that you put on your wrist or the ones you put around your ankle. And the guy was explaining to me what they were. I'm a little kid. So grandmama said, okay, we got to go now. We got to go across the street to J.C. Penney's. Go across the street to J.C. Penney's. And when we get inside of J.C. Penney's, there's a sporting section in J.C. Penney's. And what do I see? I see them same weights that go around your arm and around your leg at J.C. Penney's. Mm. I'm looking at this thing and I'm like, man, these feel the same. And, I, and I'm trying to figure out what is the purpose of them. We get home from Greenwood, and I go around on Al Thomas Circle to the back to Moses Hopper House, and he has these weights that I just seen. He doesn't have them wrapped around his arm. He got them wrapped around his ankle because he's saying this is going to help him strengthen his ankle so he can beat us when he played football. So I'm watching him. He barely can walk. And so he says to me, you want to try them on? And I try them on. I put them around my ankle and... They are very heavy as I'm walking. He tells me, walk with them, wear them all day long. You're going to find out that you're going to be better on the football field today. And here I am. I'm walking with these things all day long, and they're weighing me down. They're heavy around my ankles. And it seems like I'm, I try to run, but I can't run at the speed that I'm accustomed to. But as soon as I took those weights off, my ankles felt light. It felt like I could run faster. I could run at the same speed that I had ran before because the waste was taken off of me. The question to you today is, what's weighing you down? What's weighing you down? What's weighing you down? What's stopping you from enjoying the freedoms of life? What's weighing you down? What's holding you down? What, what ways do you have tied around your ankles? What ways do you have tied around your wrist? What ways do you have tied around your head? What ways do you have that are tied around you today and that are weighing you down? Is it a bad doctor's report that's weighing you down? Could it be your children, things that they're dealing with that's weighing you down? Could it be a job situation that's weighing you down? Could it be a financial situation that's weighing you down? Could it be a living situation that's weighing you down? Could, could it be a health challenge where you say, this weight is weighing me down and it's messing with my psyche, it's messing with my confidence? What's weighing you down today? 
Only you know what it is that's weighing you down. And what's weighing you down is holding you back from accomplishing what God has called you to accomplish and from being who God has called you to be. So you have to address the elephant in the room. What's weighing you down? Only you know what it is. Could it be insecurity? Maybe insecurity is weighing you down. Maybe it's some challenges in a relationship between you and your parents that's weighing you down. Could, could it be a relationship issue between you and your children's father or your children's mother? Could it be that those things are weighing you down? What is it that's weighing you down and holding you back today? Only you know what it is and only you can answer it and only you can address it. I, I can talk about it. I can preach about it. I can minister about it. I can give you advice about it. But only you are the one that can address it. Until you address what's weighing you down, you'll never be able to push forward and become what God has called you to be. You have to understand something, that life is precious. Not only is life precious, but God wants us to live the good life. He wants us to live the life that he has pre-planned and made ready for us ahead of time. He wants us to live that life, but he can't make you live it. It's a decision that you have to make. You have to make that decision. Until you make that decision, you'll always live a life where you're weighted down. Watch this now. The Bible asks the question. Scripture says, you did run well, but what doth hinder you? Let, let's just deal with that a moment. Galatians says, you did run well, but what doth hinder you? And he paints the picture of a runner. He's painting a picture of this guy at, at, the, at the starting line, and he's ready to run, and he's ready to run this race. And he's saying to him, what happened? You, were run, you did run well. You were running well in practice. You were together. You won some other heat, some other meets. But now all of a sudden, what's hindering you? You did run well, but what does hinder you? Is it a bad decision that's been hindering you? Is it lust that's been hindering you? Hmm. Watch now. Is it sin that's been hindering you? Because when Galatians says you did run well, but what does hinder you? He's literally talking about sin. So what sin has weighed you down? What sin is holding you back? What sin is holding you hostage? You did run well, but what does hinder you today? And so when you see runners, they're basically down to really no clothes on. Some of them you see they're wearing sleek, skin tight uh, pants, uh, 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 whatever you call them, racing suits or whatever you want to call it. They're trying to be as sleek and aerodynamic as possible in order for them to run this race because they need the air to flow over their bodies at a certain rate so that they can be able to run through it and win the race. So the question now is, what does hinder you? You did run well, but what's hindering you? You were off to the races. You were running well. You were on point. But now all of a sudden you slow now. Now all of a sudden you're not pulling like you used to. Now all of a sudden you're not pushing the way you used to. Now all of a sudden now you're not in church like you used to. You're not, you're not for God. You're not praying the way you used to. What happened? You did run well. But what does hinder you? Only you know what it is. You go further and you look in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews says it to us like this. It says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Hmm. Let us lay aside every weight. Mm. What's weighing you down today? What is that weight that you're dealing with every single day? For some, it's a lack of patience. It's a weight to you. For others of you, it's anger. It's a weight to you. For others of you, it's, it's, the, it's the mentality of hustling and grinding every day. It's a weight to you and it's holding you down. For others of you, it, it's a form of insecurity. I'm upset with me, myself personally. I'm insecure with me. I don't like the way I look. I don't like the way I dress. I don't like this about myself. I don't like that about myself. It's an insecure thing. Is that holding you back? You did run well, but what does hinder you? Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. So what is it that's holding you back? What is it that's holding you back? Is it a relationship that's holding you back? What's weighing you down? Only you know what it is. Could it be some of the bad decisions that you made in life that's weighing you down? The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 27, you start looking at verse 17 through 22. The scripture talks about that here, the apostle Paul now, has, is in chains and he's he's on the boat and they are sailing from Crete and they're going to see Caesar. And the Bible says that Paul is saying to them from the beginning, nah, this ain't gonna be right. We shouldn't we shouldn't sail from Crete, but they're gonna do it anyway. The Bible says here they are on the ship and they're sailing and all of a sudden great winds come about. And the wind now is, is destroying this boat, is pushing this boat into a place that they don't want it to go. So, so the captain of the boat is saying, 
We got to do something here because if we don't, we're going to end up in North Africa. And end up in North Africa, we're going to end up where the quicksand is and they're going to destroy the boat and every last one of us going to die. And so the Bible says now, here's what they have. They have helps on the boat. Helps are the ropes that are connected to the anchor that's wrapped under the boat. And so what this is, is are we going to drop the anchor? I'm going to drop the anchor and, and the anchor is going to hold us to the point that we don't run into North Africa and run into the quicksands and the boat destroys. And the Bible said the boat is running and the wind is blowing the boat. But then they get to a point now and they say, guess what we got to do? We got to light the ship. Paul is standing up there and says, listen, I told you that we should not have sailed from Crete. But you didn't, you didn't listen to me, but God's going to take care of us. So here they are. They're lighting the ship. They're throwing everything off the ship to make the ship light so that they won't run aground, so that the ship won't be destroyed. Watch this now. But Paul tells them that the reason that they're in this situation is because of themselves. I wonder how many of you today waited down because of you. It's not because of what somebody else did to you. It's not because of what somebody else said to you. It's not because somebody fired you. It's not because somebody walked off from you. It's not because of any of that. It's because of you. I wonder how many of you are weighted down today because of you, because of the decision that you made, because of the thing that you did, because you didn't listen to God, because you didn't listen to your mama, you didn't listen to your sister, or listen to a brother, you didn't listen to somebody who knew more than you. You didn't listen to them. And so you end up in this situation. But may I tell you today that even in situations that you caused, God is still dispatching help. The Bible says that, and Paul says that an angel stood by me this night and said, if every one of us stay on the ship, not one of us will be lost, not one of us will perish. But the key is now, you got to stay on the ship. And I wonder how many of you today, as soon as some issues started to happen, you eventually just walked away. I can't tell you how many times as a pastor, I've seen people pack up and walk away from church because things ain't going the way that they want. I don't think he ought to preach that today. I'm leaving. I don't like the fact that he didn't make mention of my name or they didn't make mention of my name in the program today. I'm the one who helped put the program off. They gave everybody credit but me. I'm leaving. And so you have people leaving. And somebody sat in your seat. I'm leaving. Somebody stepped on your pinky toe. I'm leaving. So everybody leaves because of frustration. And the reality is that you have just identified your weight. Your weight could be your frustration. You're not frustrated with the church you're in. You're frustrated with you. You're not frustrated with the church you're in. You're frustrated with you. Let me say it again. You're not frustrated with the church you're in. You're frustrated with you. You are the reason. You are the frustration. The common denominator is you. So when you pack up and go to another church, guess what you did? You took you with you. So you go over there and you run well for a moment. But then when you get there, you're frustrated again. And the reason that you're frustrated is because you brought you with you. You leave there and you go somewhere else. Now I'm going to Beulah Grove. I'm going to Lily of the Valley. I'm going over here to Brighton Morning Star Church of God and Christ Baptist Incorporated. And guess what you did? You brought you over there. And so things don't go well because you brought you over there. The common denominator is not the church. It is you. There's something on the inside of you that's causing you not to push forward and be what God has called you to be. It's an innate ability on the inside of you that is now being hindered because you can't make the decision to go forward in God. You can't make the decision to stay in a certain place. So the question now, what does hinder you? Let me get a little transparent today. All these years that I've been pastoring, I've been pastoring since 2004. No, been pastoring since 2005. Became the pastor of, of Crisis Answer Church March 18, March 18th, I think it was, 2012. So here I am. Now I'm pastoring our church. Now the name has changed to Kingdom Life Faith Center. So literally, I've been pastoring our church that I'm in now for basically eight years going on nine years. And the truth of the matter is, I have never been happy with pastoring until this year. Mm. Let me be realist. I'm being transparent. Never been happy with pastoring until this year. Wait a minute, pastor. You ain't never been happy until this year. Never been happy with pastoring until this year. Watch now. Why was I not happy? Because I was looking at people to make me happy. I was expecting things to be a certain way. I didn't expect to go through hell and high water. I didn't expect to go through challenges. I didn't expect to go through this. I didn't expect to go through that. See, people don't understand that there are challenges that you deal with when you pastor people. So watch now. People can get upset and they can leave you, but you can't leave. You got to stay right there. You got to forge ahead. You understand? You got to forge ahead. You got to continue to be on the path. So here I am. I was not happy up until this year. 
I'm getting checks that I cannot cash. If I cash my check, the church is not going to be able to pay its bills. So here I am. I'm at a point now. I got like 16 checks and I can't cash any of them. I'm waited now. I'm coming to our board and talking to our board and explaining to our board the situation that I'm in. And the board has sympathy, but there's nothing they can do because they can't make anybody show up with resources and help. And so the board is saying, I'm praying for you, Pastor. We're praying for you. I don't need no prayers at this moment. I need some resources. I need some finance. So here I am. I got all these checks. And, and I can't pay my bills. I'm frustrated all through these years. And I'm not seeing what God has shown me. And people are, people are leaving at an alarming rate. And all I'm trying to do is show the, show the love. And, and maybe I'm not coming off the right way. It's not their fault. It's my fault. And so here I am, I'm trying to weave my way through this and I'm trying to show appreciation. I'm trying to show love. I'm trying to do all these things. I'm trying to weave my way through it. And here I am, weighted down to the point we pull up in the car in the front of the church and my wife got to pray me out of the car to go inside. No, nobody really knows this because once we walked in the doors, we didn't express that to people. So here I am, I'm frustrated. Numbers are dropping. People are walking away. People are angry with me. People are not angry with me. People say they love me. People say they don't love me. And you get, you, you're in the in-betwixt place. And here I am. And I'm frustrated. And I make a decision. That this year, I'm not going to put my happiness in the hands of no man or no woman. But I'm going to put my happiness in the hand of God. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to press on. The psalmist said, I press on the upward way. <laughs> Do hide some gain the day by day. <laughs> Still praising the Lord, I'm over bound. Lord, help me, you know, plant my feet on solid ground. So I made this decision that I'm pressing on the upward way. I'm not, I'm not putting my faith in nobody else. I'm not putting my faith in anybody else. I'm not putting my faith in a man. I'm not putting my faith in a woman. But I'm putting my faith in God. I watch God do miracle signs and wonders and I'm still not happy. So now I got to get myself to a point to where I got to identify the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room is not the people. The elephant in the room is me. It's not about what they're doing. It's about what I'm not doing. It's not about them not giving. It's about me not releasing my faith. I'm talking to somebody today because what you've done is put your happiness on hold by blaming other people. And I had to accept responsibility that it has nothing to do with them. It's about my relationship with God. So I had to renew my relationship with God. I had to go to God and get on my face and repent to God and say, God, I'm sorry for not enjoying ministry. And I had told God, I'm not, I'm not happy with this. I'm not enjoying it. I have never enjoyed it. But then I started to realize that this is a choice. The Bible says Paul is standing before King Agrippa and he's telling his testimony about how he radically got saved. And here's what he says to Paul. He says to King Agrippa, he says, King Agrippa, I think myself happy. Whoa, wait a minute. My happiness is based on how I think. My happiness is not based on you. It's not based on him. It's not based on her. It's based on how I think. So I have to shift my thinking now. I ain't got time to put my happiness in somebody else's hand. It's the way I think now. So all of a sudden now, here I am. The weight of unhappiness leaves me because I made a decision that I'm going to be happy, that I'm going to enjoy my life. I preached about it, but I wasn't living that. I preached about the life that God wants you to have. I preached about the happiness that he wants you to have, but yet I wasn't having it. And so now I got to address the elephant in the room, and the elephant in the room is me. Until you confront you, you'll never be able to conquer you. Let me say it to you one more time. Until you confront you, you'll never be able to conquer you. Many of you right now, you, you are passing the buck. You're putting responsibilities on other people. If my brother had not done this, I would be happy today. If my sister didn't do this to me, I would be happy today. If they didn't do this, if she didn't do this, if my mama didn't abandon me, if my daddy was in my life, you're given all of these scenarios as to why you are not happy. And the reality is, it's nothing to do with them. It's all about you. It's all about you. My happiness is not based on what they do. It's based on what I do. So I had to address the elephant in the room and get rid of the weight. And so now here I am. I'm enjoying now ministry on an amazing scale now. I'm enjoying seeing people come to Christ. I enjoy getting up in the morning and getting on my face and praying to God and praying for our members and praying for the backyard people and praying for my children. I enjoy every bit of it because what I'm doing now is that I'm watching God work. I'm watching him work. I'm watching him do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can even master think. 
I'm watching my mind become renewed. I'm watching it because I made a decision that my happiness is not going to be in the hands of other people. I had to identify my weight. And maybe today you're watching me. You need to identify your weight. What's weighing you down? What's holding you back from enjoying the good life? What's holding you back? Is it a doctor's report? Is it the person who walked out of your life years ago? Is it the person who died on you? I didn't marry you for you to die like this. I didn't, I, I, I didn't expect to be alone. I, I, I thought that we was going to really grow old together, get in our 80s and 90s, and maybe one of us go home to be with the Lord, but, but now you gone already. Now I got to experience life all by myself. I, I didn't expect my child to die. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that. And so here you are, no happiness in your life. And so now you're frustrated. Happiness is not based on anybody else. It's based on you. I never forget when I was a kid, my brother and I used to play a lot with toys. And my brother could just get in a corner, man, and just play by himself. And, and he could take two match stems and just be over there just playing with two match stems. I never forget my Uncle Robert said, this boy makes up so much doggone noise. He, make, he, he makes up so much noise with these two match stems. He could get in the corner and play with two match stems and just be happy with the two match stems. I couldn't figure that out. I couldn't figure that out. I didn't want to be playing by myself. I wanted to be playing with the other kids in the hood. All this stuff. He could get over there with two match stems. Because watch now, he was happy within himself. If he didn't have nobody to play with, two match stems could work for him. Then I started looking at this thing, man. If he could be happy with two match stems, I'm on, I could be happy. So I, I get one of my granddaddy old tires in the back of our yard and push it around the neighborhood, push it around the block where we live, playing with the tires and all this type of stuff. I'm, I'm getting happy too. I'm talking to somebody today. You gotta identify your elephant in the room. What's weighing you down today? What's holding you back from enjoying your life? What's stopping you from enjoying the good life today? What's stopping you? Only you know what it is. For some of you, you are watching me today, and, and maybe your pastor's in the church, or maybe your first lady's in the church. You know the thing that's holding you back in your church is your religion. Religion is holding you back. You still do stuff the way y'all did it 30 years ago. And your church is not growing. There is no young people in your church at all. And because there is no young people in your church, your church is dying. It's dying slowly because you have no young people in it. Because you're still doing service the way you did it 30 years ago. And you're not even realizing that you are not drawing people. You are pushing people away. You're still singing the same old songs. Who am I talking to today? You're still singing the same old songs y'all sang in the 70s that have no merit with people today. You have not shifted. You have not changed. Still wearing the same old robe, still the same old Baptist robe that has no attachment to it, that does not help anybody, that does not attract anybody, that pushes people away. And so you're wondering why our church ain't growing. It is not growing because you are weighing it down with your religion. You won't let it go. I'm talking to somebody today. You won't let it go. You won't get rid of your religion. Every Sunday, everybody, every first Sunday, everybody got to have their clergy collar on. We got to dress up on their first Sunday, the communion. This is how we're supposed to act. And there's a generation that's coming into the church that's looking at you like, what in the world is all of this? You are not shifting. You are not changing. You are not moving on. You are not transforming. And so this next generation can't even come into the church because you got all of these religious rules that you have. And, and the only person who's in the church is you and mother so-and-so. You and mother so-and-so, and, and y'all want, we praying and people ain't coming. The people ain't coming because y'all don't change. Y'all still doing the same thing over and over again. Us has still got to wear these long old black dresses. Nurses still got to wear the nurse's hat with the long old white outfit. Man, that stuff ain't in the book. This you coming up with your religiosity, presenting it to church, and you're wondering why people can't grow. Because you are wearing it down with your religious thoughts, your religious apathy. You doing it. I'm talking so I don't know who you are today. But you're on here. You're blocking the growth because you won't get rid of the weight. The Bible said that Solomon took a, a jawbone of an ass and he killed 1,000 Philistines with the jawbone of an ass. And as soon as he killed them and the fight was over, he took the jawbone and threw it to the ground, which signified that the fight is over. I don't need this weapon again. It was only used just for this fight and not anything else. I'm talking to somebody today. There are some things that you do that were great in this season, but it's not great anymore. It's not great anymore. The message don't change the way we present it does. I'm talking to somebody. You're on here today. 
And you're wondering, the same way that you structure your message and preaching your message to people, and ain't nobody learning nothing from it. Because nowadays, you can't hoop your way through your message now. When we're in the advent of social media, you can't get up there and filibuster your way through the message now. Well, 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 now, uh-uh. You on TV now. You, you, got, you can't do all of that now. Because the people who are watching you today need your substance. They don't need your hoop. They don't need your holler. That ain't doing nothing for them. They're in a pandemic. They're in a crisis. They're seeing this nation split down the middle. And you're well, 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 now. It's not helping anybody. I'm talking to you prophetically today. You got to put this stuff to the and let God come along and remove this weight. For some of you, it's the weight of religion. We got to have an usher board meeting. So you got this person is a part of the usher board and that person is on the deacon board. And before you turn around, the usher board leader is a member of the male choir, is a member of the women's choir. You're part of several different organizations and you're working as hard as you can. You're working your fingers to the bone to produce an appreciation on, the, on a certain Sunday of the month and nothing is growing for you and nothing is producing for you because you're stuck in a time war. It is nothing more than religion with you every day. Religion, religion. Religion, 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 and you're wondering why it's not growing. We gotta have our annual day. Gotta have our usher son. So the usher gonna pick who gonna preach. Gotta have our annual day. The men day. So the man gotta pick who gonna preach. The devil is a lie. We ain't having no annual days in our church. We ain't having no youth day. We ain't, we ain't having no annual day. We ain't having no usher Sunday in our church. We ain't having no no male Sunday in our church. None of that. We ain't having none of that in our church. We don't got rid of all of this religious foolishness in order for us to grow and progress. All of those things are nothing more than the position to raise money. That's it. And nobody realizes it. We're stuck in the time war. Stuck in the time war. Never progressing, never moving, never increasing, never growing. Because this is the way we've done it for years. So, so, so the deacons got to have their white gloves on on the first Sunday. What that mean? Just because you got on white gloves don't mean you're purity. Shoot, some of the ones wearing the white gloves are deep in sin. Well, what does that mean? It's our mentality. So we done shifted from all of that. We shifted from every bit of that. But church is still doing the Sunday school. Sunday school is good, but just think about this for a moment. Only you and mother so-and-so is in Sunday school. Hey, let me say it to you one more time. Only you and mother so-and-so is in Sunday school. I remember we used to have a lot of people in Sunday school. You don't have a lot of members. The folks in Sunday school don't want to be in Sunday school, so they don't show up. So here you are. You're upset with people. So it's you and mother so-and-so in Sunday school and Deacon Jojo in Sunday school and both of y'all 70 years old. Ain't nobody showing up. I got to keep it. Got to keep it. And then you get mad at people because they're not showing up. It's because the people... I'm saying, I just, I just want to hear my pastor in this season. I, I just want to hear him. I just want to hear, hear him. I, I'm, not, I'm not interested in all the rest of this stuff. And so the religion is killing people slowly. And it's been weighing you down for so long. When are we going to make the decision that we're going to get rid of the weights? I'm talking to somebody today. You have to identify and address the elephant in the room. What is it? In the same way that I had to identify and address the elephant in my room. You got to do the same thing. I started to realize that I couldn't do everything in the ministry. I started to realize that the church wasn't mine. The church is not my wife. The church is God's wife. So I had to go to God and I had to say, God, God, you take your wife back. Your wife is too expensive for me to take care of. You take your wife back. I need you to take care of your wife and I need you to help me take care of my wife. I had to put it back in the hands of God because it belonged to him. And there are many of you today you're weighted down because you're trying to take on responsibilities that are not yours. You're trying to take responsibility that it is not your responsibility with your children. You're trying to take on the responsibility of being the mother to your children and the mother to your grandchildren. I'm talking to somebody today. You cannot be those people. At your age now, you are the one who is supposed to shift and give advice to your children. Your children may not want to listen, may not want to hear your advice. But that's your role at this moment. You can't control your grown child and you can't control little Baba Quisha and little Nana. -na. You can't control them. You, 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 you're not their parent. And so here you are taking on weight. So now you're frustrated with little Baba Quisha. Well, little Baba Quisha is your grandchild, not, not your child. 
You understand? You 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 upset with little Nana. He he won't do right. So you're mad with him, and you got this weight. And so now here you are. You got headaches. You frustrated. You irritated. You agitated. And what you need to be doing is enjoying your life at this moment. You you need to be enjoying your life at this moment. You understand? Baba Quisha got a mama. You understand? Little Nana got a mama. You understand? You you got you you got to be able to explain to Baba Quisha mama, Nana mama. You got to be able to say, listen. If you let Baba Quisha keep doing this stuff and, and you let Baba Quisha put, keep put, taking pictures with her hand on her heel, you, you, you're about to open up some doors for some stuff that you're not going to like later on in life. If you, if you keep laughing at what little Nana is saying to you and you thinking it's funny, you, you're going to find out that that stuff ain't going to be funny because little Nana going to embarrass you in front of people later on in life. You got to deal with this. See, it, that's your role at this moment. You you can come through and buy Baba Quisha and Nana some, you understand, some outfits or some stuff like that because you the grandma you supposed to fall about. Baba Quisha, nah, nah, but, but you ain't supposed to just take care of everything. And here you are, you're stuck, and you're weighted down with every single thing. And you're wondering, why am I tired all the time? Why is it that I can't keep no money? Why is it that I'm hurting all the time? Have you alleviated the weight where you just enjoy your life? Have you alleviated the weight? What's the weight? What's holding you down? What's causing the migraine headaches? What's causing the heart palpitations? What's causing the diarrhea? What, what's causing the acid reflex? What, what's causing it? There's something that's causing it. And you are not addressing the elephant in the room. Sometimes what's causing it is that you just don't do this anymore. You don't do that anymore. Sometimes... When I get finished doing what I'm doing, I go to my office. And I sit right there in my office with the door closed for some hours until my wife come down in there. I'm sitting in there, I'm meditating, I'm getting my head together. Because I know that I got things I got to do. And I can't do it if I'm frustrated, if I'm irritated, if I'm agitated. I understand that. You have to address the elephant in the room. What's your elephant in the room? What's holding you down? What's weighing you down? You did run well in the beginning, but what does hinder you? What's holding you back? Only you know the answer, and only you can address it. We can talk about it, but you the one that's got to be about it. It's on you today. All right, that's my time right there. I got to get out of here today, you know. But I pray you guys were blessed this morning. I do. My cough is still hot. <laughs> So listen, y'all share a light tag invite today. Start a watch party today. Get other people to come on and be a part of in the back of y'all with Pastor Perryman, all right? And um, I appreciate every one of y'all. I do. Hey, shout out to Miss Abigail Yates, Miss Jennifer Smith, who's on today. Hey, Miss Gloria Turner's in the house. Prophetess Kathy Fontenot is on today. Um, shout out to uh, Salilo Jones, who's rocking with us today. Good to see you, my brother. Thank you so much for tuning in. Listen, I'm getting ready to pray, and then I got to give somebody their day today, all right? So don't go anywhere. Let me pray for you, and let me give you your day today, all right? Hey, my cousin Byron Williams is rocking with us this morning, too. Good to see you, man. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up every person who's watching me today. I ask in Jesus' name, God, that you would bless the people that you would add to their lives, that you would increase them more and more. You said in your word that wealth and riches will be in our house. So, Lord, we believe that we receive that now in Jesus' name. So now, Father, I pray for your grace and mercy to be over every person who's watching me today. For every person, God, who's weighted down, I ask in Jesus' name that you would help us, God, to identify the weight, but help us, God, to confront it and conquer it today so that our lives would never be the same again. And, Lord, I give you praise and I give you glory today. I thank you, Lord, for blessing the country of Belize. I thank you for blessing the citizens there. I thank you, Lord, for blessing the Delta as a whole. But, God, I thank you for blessing Itabina. I thank you that my town shall recover from a fall. And I thank you, Lord, that you're pulling down and destroying false leadership and you're renewing it with new governmental authority today. And Lord, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, got to give somebody that day today, but don't listen. Get your seed in the ground today. Go to our website, kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground today, all right? Hey, today is Prophet Catherine Fontenot's day. Whatever she wants, she gets. Whatever she needs, gets supplied. It's her day today. So shout out to her. Uh, today is Miss Irene Holmes. Whatever Miss Irene Holmes wants, she gets. Whatever she needs, gets supplied. Today is her day today. 
Show them some love. And today is Brother Salalo Jones Day. Whatever he wants, he gets. Whatever he needs, gets supplied. It's his day today. And then last but not least, today is Miss Lakeisha Ali's day. Whatever she wants, she gets. Whatever she needs, gets supplied. It's their day today. So show them some love. Show them some appreciation. And um, we thank y'all so much for being on, all right? Get your seat in the ground. Go to our website. KingdomLifeFaithCenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground today. Don't let the devil stop you from sowing and giving. Remember we said we don't believe in team I. We believe in team we. We are a team, so for every soul we win, for every life to change, for every person who gets built up, you're going to get credit for it because you're part of the team today. So we thank y'all so much for tuning in uh, this morning. If you want to sow directly to me, you can do it through the Cash App. The Cash App is the dollar sign, Pastor C. Perryman. Again, the dollar sign, Pastor C. Perryman. Um, also, uh, to sow to my wife, it's the dollar sign Pastor Sophia. All right, get it in the ground today. All right. Hey, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all so much. And we thank y'all for tuning in. All right. Hey, shout out to Miss Kelly Johnson today. All right. God bless. Y'all have a great day. Be blessed in Jesus' name.